Okay, so I want to talk a little bit today about um, about how you can get results within a crisis. Because the problem that we have with you see with magic, what happens is there's there's a, a few a few ingredients that people don't talk about. There's um, there's an occult law of indifference, and one of the one of the many reasons why why people have difficulty in magic is that when you when you you in order to get the seed planted, okay. So let's 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 talk. Like, I always say all magic is sex magic. All magic is sex magic because you have to have that fem feminine and masculine coming together to plant the seed, right? So <clears throat> it's not sex magic in, in, in the, the physical, it's not two physical bodies necessarily. I mean, you can do that. There's there's nothing wrong with, with actual sex magic. I mean, there's 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 a whole there's a whole teachings around that and, and, and it's valid, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fact that in order to impregnate uh, a, a in order for a man to impregnate a woman in 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 in, in mammals, in a male to impregnate a female in mammals, there needs to be an arousal, and then an ejaculation, in order for that to happen. And the same thing is true with magic. You need to have a major desire for the thing itself. Desire magic without desire is impotent. It doesn't happen. Okay, so you have to really want the thing. It's got to be extremely important to you. You want it, want it, want it, want it, want it with every ounce of your being, right? Where that that's all you can, that's all all you want. That's it. you got to have that much desire in the in the spellcasting process. It can't just be like a you know a casual visualization. It must be a major desire. You must have. You must want, 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 want it. But you also must do that within a relaxed frame of mind and body in order for that your your what we call your mental shield to come down. Now the mental shield is is just a is a concept that we use to describe the waking consciousness. We call you know that your waking consciousness, your day-to-day -day waking consciousness. Um, has a a a, a, um, a level of tension in built to it, built into it, just just living in this world. And tension um, is antithetic to to magical success. So in order for you to be in a in a um, in a magical frame of mind, in order for spell work to happen, you must have a, a, a your mental shield down. And the only way to lower that mental shield is through relaxing the body and the mind. It is a type of trance, yes. So you 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 you, you in order to get into that trance, you must lower the ment mental shield. You must lower your your um, your guards. You must lower your protections. You must lower. All of all of your defenses must be lowered, which is another reason why it's a good idea to do magic either within a circle or at least within your orb of light. If you don't know how to do the orb of light, you can just go over to the witch's primer and learn how to do that. You can just do that meditation uh, even without any other training in, um, in in the craft. You can use that all by itself. And so, but anyway, in order for for that to be effective, that has to be there. So you have to have both the the, the 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 intense desire and your mental shield needs to be down both at the same time. That's the trick. Now, when you're done, when you're done with the deed, when you're done with the casting of your spell, you must have an occult law of you, the, the, that occult law of indifference must be must be your your life. You must have this sort of like live and let live mentality like I don't care if it happens I don't care if it doesn't happen I'm just gone it's just done and because you've already planted the seed it's already on its way if you keep your desire for the thing active and you don't uh, get into that place of indifference what you're doing is in effect trying to dig the seed back up and pull it back out of the earth you are you are not leaving it alone 
and you have to leave it alone. You have to just let it go and trust that the goddess knows what she's doing because once it's underground or once it's in the womb, it's literally out of your hands and it's in the, the realms of the mystery and, you, and, and you'll never know how that works. You'll never know how that works because it's not for you to know. That's why it's occult. So you may or may not have the manifestations in the forms that you think that you want them. You don't know how it will manifest. You don't know through what channels. You don't know any of that. That's not for you to know. The more you can let it go and forget about it and just go about your day-to-day -day tasks, the faster it will come. Well, that's difficult enough in normal day-to-day -day life. But when you're in the midst of a crisis, to be able to have that kind of indifference, that takes a heck of a lot of discipline. That's very, very difficult. And that's another reason why it's so important to work well enough within your sphere of influence that that it's not um, yeah, it's not so so much of a leap of faith um, that you're that you're pulling yourself out of that indifference. It's really difficult to detach from the outcome. And that's probably one of the things that people stumble on the most is being able to detach. And and you, you almost get to a point of like, it'll either happen or it won't and I don't care, right? Which is really tough to do when you had to be working on something that was like so important to you that your desire level was, was off the charts. But that's what is required. And that can be very challenging. And that's also where we need to be. Now, not only is that true for our spells, but that's true for our day-to-day -day lives. That if you are capable of having indifference with compassion in your day-to-day -day life, you're going to be more useful to the people around you. So when we say being indifferent to the outcome, that doesn't mean that you're indifferent to people. It doesn't mean that you don't have compassion for people. It doesn't mean you want to, don't want to help people. It doesn't mean that you're not there to be of service to people. It just means that you're not pulled into the drama. It means that you're not sucked into the illusion. You have to be able to get to the point where you say, it appears that thus, is, and, thus and such are happening but I don't know what's really happening under the surface. I am not willing to judge by appearances. I am willing to be here as an instrument of whatever your, whatever your understanding of deity is, my um, inter instrument of the goddess, if you will, to, um, uh, to, to be here of service so that, so that I can, I, so that I can help because we all want to be helpful, right? But you're not going to be helpful if you do that and then you go into, okay, now that means I need, I need to manipulate this and I need to manipulate that and I need to do this because I know what's supposed to happen. You don't know what's supposed to happen. If you, if, you can, if you can interact with your own higher self and you can interact thusly with, 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 the, with divine principle, then you're... you're asking for help on a level that is outside of your mortal consciousness, that's outside of your understanding of the way things work. It's, under, it's outside of the current thought system. And therefore, you don't know what the solution should look like. You don't know even what the problem actually is completely. All you know is what your senses are telling you. All you know is the data as you as you have received it. But you don't know from the other side of, 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 the, of, of the universe what things look like from the point of view of, of, the, of, the, uh, of the infinite and of the, crea of the divine. So when we have that, when we, when we, when, whether it's with a personal spell or whether it's just with our day-to-day -day interactions with people, especially during a crisis, we have to find a balance where we have indifference to the, to the situations as we see them without losing our compassion. And in fact, what you find, and, and you see this, like if you look at how Mother Teresa was with people, she did this all the time, that the, the more indifferent she was to the circumstances, the more compassionate she was to the people. Right? She, she, wasn't, she wasn't sitting there like, oh, this is horrible. Oh my God, everybody's starving. Ah, ah, what do I do? No, she was there as a, as a, as a, as a, as a bit of strength. As, as strength for those people. She came in strong and she helped and she helped and she helped. And she was indifferent to the machinations of the suffering, but she was not indifferent to the people who were suffering. 
There is a huge difference, and I hope you understand the difference. Okay. I am absolutely living for the procreative analogy for magic. I cracked up a little bit, but it makes all too much sense. Well, it's true, though, isn't it? Um, you know, that's, I mean, if you've ever been to a Beltane celebration, <laughs> maybe a lot of you are, are new to the craft maybe and haven't, but but Beltane is, and, and you don't have to celebrate the you don't have to celebrate the wheel of the year like we do, like many of us do. That's that's part of a neo-pagan sort of tradition. But in order to, to practice witchcraft, you don't have to be a part of anybody's religious ob observations. Anybody's, no matter what they are, whether they're pagan, Christian, anything. You can be you can be a, a practitioner of the craft, the actual craft with a capital C, regardless of, of any religion. You don't have to be a part of it. That's why I teach non-denominational witchcraft so that we can we can um, inc be inclusive of people's uh, pe people's understanding of divinity. So, but anyway, but yeah, but but if you've ever been to a Beltane celebration, you realize that the god and the goddess and their sex and their sex act is is a is a means by which we understand the the creativity of the entire universe. And so, as above, so below is stated in the Hermetic principles. So, if it's true for God, it's true for us. Because remember, if you, if you're doing any psalm magic, one thing that is repeated there is the concept that we are gods, and ye are gods means literally ye are gods and so never it doesn't say ye are egos it says ye are gods so but the ego wants you not to notice that you're god it wants you not to know that you're a god it wants you to think that you're a little vulnerable you know speck of dust that's 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 extremely vulnerable that that is in danger and that is undeserving and then on the other hand it wants you to feel like you're better than everybody else so that you can feel separate <laughs> it'll get you any way it can in order to separate you from your good why because the ego's goal is separation the way that the ego was created and is created, it didn't happen in time, it happens in the moment. The way that the ego is created is anything that you can look at as being separate from you and you being separate from your good is your ego mind. And the ego mind creates structure that way. You're every you I'm I am me because I'm not everything else. I'm this book is this book because it's not the table, it's not the hand, and it's not the air around it. These letters are these letters because they're not everything that's that's that that's that's in the space around them. That's how the ego views everything is in terms of not. It's not this and it's not that and it's not this and it's not that. Divinity views everything in terms of what it is. You are an extension of love. You are an extension of light. You are a unique and powerful individual. You are bigger than your body. You are bigger than this lifetime. You are eternal. You are a God, right? And so then the ego, the way that the ego will use the body as is as being a, a, a place where, where you have pain. It has a place where you have disease. It's a place where you fight with people. It's a place where you feel th that you, that you run for protection. It's a, it's, um, the, the ego uses the body as as a as a means to separate and it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a temple of darkness to the to the ego why because the ego is darkness the ego is not a real thing the ego is every shadowing of your light that you have in your life right and we think that it's who we are because it it, it shows up as our personality so when you start to learn how to give these things up and you start to learn how to live in, in more of your uh, as, as a spirit and less as an ego, you notice that you don't lose these things. You don't lose your body. You don't lose your possessions. You don't lose your world. It's just that they become different. You start to see them differently. You're not, it's, it's not so much that your body is, you know, a, 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 a temple of darkness anymore. Your body is a housing for who you are as a spirit so that you can help you can help you can have you can you, you can do things in this life um that that's what your body's for it's a, it's it like a spell is a communication device it's a way that you can communicate with other with other souls on this earth plane that's all it is right and it's a beautiful thing for that but that's not how the ego uses it the um the ego doesn't use relationships as 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 a as a, a holy and 
encounter as a as a means for um, as a means for for um, for transcendence. It uses relationships as prisons. It uses relationships as 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 places to uh, to create more separation because the ego is the thought of separation. Okay, so love and light are synonymous, and that's who you are. You are literally a star. You are an extension of love. That's who you are. God did not create you back in the past. God is creating you now, in the present moment. That's what eternity means in the Psalms. That's what that's what forever means in the in the, uh, happily forever, uh, uh, happily ever after in a fairy tale. Literally means now in this present moment. God is, God is extending light as you. And so I love that image of, of, of sunbeams in a sun. It's not like you used to be a sunbeam and you were created as, as a sunbeam and now somehow you got to reattach yourself to the sun. It doesn't work like that. That doesn't make sense, does it? No. The sunbeam is constant because the sun is constant. That means you're created every moment and you're, 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 you are a, a creature of light and joy. And anything that's not that is a horrible dream, a horrible distraction that your ego is having to, to, to create shadows in your life so that you so that you can feel separate because that's what you created that ego for is to is to prove that you're separate. Okay? So I know that that's a lot to, to chew on, but but it's a good thing to remember that if you are wanting to literally, if you really want to work magic to create positive change in, in your life, you have to know which part of your mind is working the magic. Where are those desires coming from? Is this a desire for, for joy? Is this a desire for success? Is this a desire to connect? Is this a desire to be more of who you are? Is this a desire for you to, to fulfill your functions that you came here to fulfill? Or are these magical goals of yours uh, desires to to create more separation you know and that's where you know the, the old terms white magic and black magic come from it's not so much that it's evil for you to do hexes or that it's evil for you to do selfish spells to, to get lovers and things like that it's not that you're a bad person and you're going to go to hell it's just that what what that does if you if you're if you're working magic that's ego based is that it reinforces your belief that you are that ego and it creates more of a prison for you and that's why when people do too much selfish negative magic, it appears that it it comes back on them multiplied. It's not that it's coming back on them, even though it looks like it. It's just that it never left them in the first place. And the nature of of, of mind is expansion for good or for ill. So the, the thought forms that you hold and that you that you um, that you harbor and that you nurture continue to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And so if you're doing magic, you're putting a lot of extra energy into it than than just a normal thought. So if you're doing magic that's selfish and magic that is destructive, um, then those thought forms are going to keep growing and growing and growing, and you're going to see nothing but destruction you're going to be see nothing but but um but 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 failure you're going to be seeing nothing but pain you and it's going to look like um that those spells boomeranged back on you but it's not that they boomeranged back on you because they never left you in the first place it just takes a while sometimes for things to manifest so you don't want to you don't want to manifest from ego you want to manifest from spirit and you can tell the difference by how much tension uh, those things hold in your body. Spirit tends to want to bring peace. Spirit tends to want to bring uh, solutions that, that are good for everybody. The ego tends to want to bring tension. The ego tends to want to bring fear. The ego tends to want to bring darkness and wants solutions that are good for it only and wants other people to lose. The, the ego loves winners and losers and the spirit loves winners and winners. That, that there's, there's, there's always a way. And that's why, like, when we work with angelic magic for things like hexing, and because I don't, I'm not one of those people that says you can never curse. It's just that the way you curse uh, it makes all the difference in the world. It's so like when we do a psalmic curse, we're not cursing people. We're not cursing sentient beings, but we are cursing those thoughts inside of us that are creating the problems to begin with. And... Um, and the way that those curses are structured in the Bible, it's great because you are you are leaving the the dirty deeds, so to speak, in the hands of divinity. Therefore, you know you're safe because nothing nothing but good will come from it, right? So when you're 
it's not so much that you can't do any specific form of magic. It's just what is the feeling in your body when you're doing it? How much peace, how much joy, how much aliveness are you, are, are, uh, is, it, is it bringing you? Well, that's an indication that you're, that you're working uh, with your soul, that you're working with your spirit. Um, uh, if it's bringing you more tension, if it's bringing you more greed, if you're being obsessive, if you're, um, you know, if, if you notice that, that, that you're, that you're delighting in the, in the, um, uh, you know, come up in some, somebody, even somebody that's been really horrible, then that's probably your ego. That's probably magic of the ego. And that's probably going to create effects in your life that you don't want. That's all. And it's not just, it's not pink paint. It's not white lighting. It's not fluff bunny. It's just, it's a metaphysical theory. It's magical theory 101A. You, you get what you, you get what you give, basically. The more, the more you think about something, the more it expands. And if you do it within a magical context, it expands very rapidly and very, very powerfully. So it's very important to understand these things. All right. Well, I think I'm going to have to end with that. I hope that this was interesting for you guys, and I cannot wait to see you again. Much love, many blessings. Blessed be.